Hi there, I'm Shane, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Raynox Clip-On Macro Lens. This nifty little lens basically attaches to the front element of a lens you already have and turns it into a pseudo macro lens to allow you to get close-up photos you wouldn't have been able to take otherwise. So this video is going to be all about the Raynox DCR250 Super Macro Lens. And quite honestly, I initially purchased this product as a joke, and I really had zero expectations of it actually performing well. However, after using it for the last couple of months, I've come pretty much a full 180 and would actually recommend you picking this product up if you're looking for a fun new photography accessory to play around with. However, my recommendation does come with many caveats to it and I'll discuss all the pros and cons of using this kind of clip-on filter style device and how it compares to extension tubes and ultimately how it compares to a true macro lens. Starting off with the basics though, the idea of the Raynox macro lens is super simple. You simply clip it onto the front element of a lens you're using and it acts as a straight up magnifying glass to allow you to get a closer minimum focusing distance and ultimately a greater reproduction ratio that can approach a true macro level. However, Raynox advertises it as having a 2.5 times kind of magnification, which is very vague and it varies depending on the lens that you're using and how it's mounted and how far away from the lens it actually is. But the key thing to keep in mind is it basically just acts as a magnifying glass and it opens up the opportunity if you're using already a lens that's capable of a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio, this can allow it to get a greater than one-to-one -one reproduction ratio and have a better magnification essentially. So it's pretty cool for that reason. Before I dive into discussing its performance and image quality, I'll briefly discuss its build. And because of the way it's designed, it's only compatible with certain setups, which is a key thing to keep in mind. As a whole though, the thing is mainly made out of just ABS plastic and it's very rigid and not gonna fall apart on you, but it's certainly not robust or gonna withstand a lot of falls. For the price you pay though, that's certainly reasonable. And the important component, the glass, is clearly very well made and has decent coatings on it and I haven't had any issues with scratching or smudging on it. So the glass is great, which is the most important part. And for the price you pay, I think that's very reasonable. The way the Raynox actually attaches to the front of a lens is via these kind of clips that are spring loaded on the back of the filter. And it basically just bites into the grooves on the front filter thread of a lens and attaches that way. And this is where the first few key disadvantages come into play because it only fits on lenses with a 52 to 67 millimeter diameter, which isn't a huge range. And this can be easily circumvented by using a step up or step down ring. But overall, this attachment method isn't ideal and just doesn't feel super secure, though it is certainly not difficult and it comes on and off very easily. Is just rather limiting, especially considering most full frame cameras, uh, the common lenses and even the kit lenses that you use with them have a larger front filter thread than this can actually fit on. Though if you're using a crop sensor camera or a camera that can't actually change lenses, this will probably work a little bit better and you'll get better mileage out of it. The majority of the money that you pay though clearly goes into the glass and the Raynox is far sharper than it has any right to be. In my testing I used it in conjunction with two of the sharpest lenses that I own, the Sony 55mm f1.8 and then the Sony G 90mm f2.8 macro lens. And I'm not going to emphasize which lens was used with each photo and video, mainly because they clearly aren't going to be the limiting factor. But a key thing to keep in mind when you're using this lens yourself with certain lenses, it might not perform as well as you would expect even though they're already sharp lenses. This is because a lot of portrait lenses are tuned to be focusing at like 5 meters to infinity rather than at their minimum focusing distance. And this is super reasonable because that's what, not what they're optimized for. So 
they might not be as sharp as you would expect and it might not be due to the Raynox. It just might be the fact that the lens isn't its sharpest at its minimum focusing distance. With that said, I found the Raynox relatively consistently resulted in sharp images, especially at the center of the frame. I'd consider it very acceptable. And near the edges, there is a bit of a fall off in sharpness and there is a slight increase in chromatic aberration I noticed though certainly not to an unreasonable amount, just that there's a little bit more presence when in high contrast situations. However, the more noticeable thing is because the Rhinox is 43 millimeters large, there can be a significant amount of vignetting introduced depending on the lens that you're using because the edges of the actual lens or even the plastic might show up in your image because it's just not large enough to cover the actual focusing area. So it can be a little bit obstructive requiring you to crop the image a bit, ultimately reducing the image quality. And the edges of the filter itself aren't the sharpest, so there is a lot of fall off in the corners, which again can be a little bit of an issue. Though with macro photography, a lot of the time you're focusing on the center of the frame, so it's not as limiting as if you were using it for landscapes or something. So they're not deal breakers, however, they're important limitations to keep in mind. Overall though, I found the Rainox to be very sharp and I certainly would consider the images that I get print quality. And I found it to be most useful actually in video because it resolves easily up to 4K, and if I had a camera that shot in 8K, I think it would do relatively well for that as well. On that note, unlike an extension tube, this clip-on lens has no interference with the electronic components of a lens, so your autofocus system theoretically should perform just as well, though I do find it behaves a little bit differently because you're using it in a limited range. Overall, especially for video, I found the tracking to be actually much more accurate than when I was using an extension tube, and especially when using it with lenses like the Sony 55mm, which has a very fast focusing motor inside it, it did quite well. So I found its performance with regards to autofocusing to be remarkably surprising on all the Sony cameras that I tested it on. A key limitation to keep in mind though is how the Raynox actually affects both your minimum and maximum focusing distance. Because even though it does allow you to focus much fo closer to your camera, that means it also limits how far away you can focus and you can no longer focus on infinity, which can be rather limiting and frustrating because you really have no indication of how far away a subject is before you can no longer focus on it besides just not being able to focus on it. And especially when you're just trying to get a subject in focus, you sometimes have to just keep going closer and then sometimes you go too close. So it can be a little bit annoying with respects to that. And it's very similar to how extension tubes work. However, a key advantage is, is that because this lens is so easy to basically clip on and take off of a lens, if you want to take a regular photo, you can just pop it off. Whereas if you were using an extension tube, you'd have to remove the lens, take the extension tube off, put the lens back on, which is much slower and exposes your sensor to unnecessary dust and weather, whereas the Raynox is just a whole heck of a lot easier. Besides that key difference though, I didn't really notice a huge difference in terms of image quality, though the Raynox certainly does have a little bit better autofocus performance as a whole, it's a lot more limited because it's only compatible with a few certain size lenses and also is just not a, as well built as say a lot of extension tubes are. And extension tubes are a lot cheaper, so they're universally compatible, which means they'll have a longer lifespan for you, relatively speaking, and are gonna be a little bit of a better value. So as a whole, I can't really say I'd prefer one over the other. If I could use either, I'd, I'd take both with me and you can use both at the same time if you really want. So they have their own advantages and disadvantages and one isn't really better than another, though an extension tube is a better value. The last key comparison to make now that I've gone over all the pros and cons of using the Raynox is how it compares to a true macro lens. And I'm gonna be a bit of a downer because 
they're not really on the same playing field. Even though the Rainox does get quite good image quality, if you were to attach this to kind of the best prime that you have, it still won't compare in terms of image quality and versatility to a true macro lens. However, that's not really the point of it because it's just a really neat accessory that allows for greater versatility in lenses you already own. So overall, I do highly recommend trying out the Raynox if you have a hundred bucks sitting around that you want to spend on something fun to play with on your camera. However, if you're just getting into macro photography and want to get a little bit better bang for your buck, extension tubes are the way to go and you can always get the Raynox, though don't really think of it as a replacement to a macro lens. It's just a fun accessory to play around with and in no way does it really compare to a true macro lens. With that said, when it's attached to a macro lens, it's a lot of fun to play around with still. And I really enjoyed using it and making this video was a blast. And I certainly see myself taking it along with me down the road when I am gonna make macro videos, especially if I want to have just that little bit extra magnification that this allows me to get and the better autofocus performance when compared to extension tubes. So. It's certainly worthwhile to get if you're looking at getting it and i really like it so that's kind of my conclusion on the matter it's neat <laughs> as always though thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did or if you have any questions or suggestions or something that i missed in this video please leave a comment below and if you really liked the video and want to see more like it maybe consider subscribing to my channel because it goes a really long way for me to make more fun videos like this and review more products and try some more stuff out. Anyways, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.